Sam Smyers here. Today I want to talk about how to record and how to mix your voice for podcast or for radio. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. If you are already a subscriber to my channel, welcome back. And if not, then I suggest that you give this video a like and subscribe to my channel because that will help you stay updated with future videos just like this. Podcasting has become really popular nowadays and everyone wants to get that really nice, clean, radio sounding voice for their podcast. So I just wanna go over some basics of how we can get your voice to sound really good and then also some pro level techniques that we can use to clean it up even further. Let's first talk about how to record a good vocal. You have two types of mics that you can use to record. You have condenser mics and dynamic mics. This mic right here is a Shure SM7B. It is a dynamic mic and it is a mic made specifically for broadcasters. Dynamic microphones like this are great because you can record in a room that is not ideal with all of the acoustic treatment and maybe there's a noisy air conditioning going on and it will minimize all the background noise because they are really only sensitive to noises that are really up close and in front of the mic. So it's good for speaking into and reducing the background noise. Condenser microphones tend to pick up the background noise a lot easier. So you will need to have a room that is a bit more quieter than if you were using a dynamic mic. Otherwise you could have all this background hiss and air conditioning noise if you have a noisy air conditioning or if there's somebody running a leaf blower outside you would pick up all that noise a lot easier with a condenser mic. Ultimately, the best mic to use is the mic that you've got. So you just have to use whatever you've got. And then if you can get something that works a bit better for your situation, then you can upgrade and get something that works better. As of now, this is what I have. So I'm going to use this to test and give you the examples. So let's talk about when you are actually recording your voice. When you are recording your voice, you wanna get really close to the mic if you want that really nice radio sound because when you get really close to the mic, you have this thing called the proximity effect. And the proximity effect says that whenever you get the sound source closer to the mic like this, then you're going to boost the bass a lot more. So you get that nice broadcaster type boomy vocal sound. Also note that whenever you're recording close to a mic like this, you're gonna have some type of plosives so you should have some type of pop filter in front of the mic. This SM7B has this filter that is kind of built in. So I'm just gonna leave this here. It wouldn't be as good as having an additional pop filter in front of it, but it's good enough for me right now. If you wanna help reduce your plosives even more, you can also change the direction in which you are facing the mic. So right now I have the mic slightly off to the side because I'm speaking this way. So I'm not speaking directly into the mic, otherwise I would pick up more of those plosive sounds like that. So you get more of those plosives. So I'm shooting the air this way instead of directly into the mic. So this could be kind of like a cheat where you're actually talking into the mic, but off to the side a bit. So let's go ahead and record something. All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. Our guest today is Sam Smyers. Let's listen to that. All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. Our guest today is Sam Smyers. Now, just listening back to that, we can hear that it's a pretty clean sounding recording. So it's always nice to start with something good in the first place. We hear some plosives. So let's go ahead and insert a EQ on here. I'll just do an EQ8. And if I put on a low cut, that's gonna help me control some of those plosives. All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. And I'll roll that off around 80 hertz to 100. And let's go ahead and put on a compressor now because your voice is really dynamic, so we really need to compress your voice down. For that radio voice, you're gonna hit the compressor really hard. So let's go ahead and put on just our compressor. We want the attack to be really fast. Now for the release, you want the release to be fast. You can also just set auto so that it automatically determines the release and it will change the release depending on the incoming source. So let's just go ahead and try this out. 
All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. Okay, let's go ahead and soften this knee up. And then I'm going to put this look ahead on because the look ahead is actually going to trigger the compressor slightly before the actual audio peak. So this is just gonna make sure that we are capturing any peaks that make their way past that threshold. Okay, so that's the first compressor. Let's turn it up. All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. Our guest today is Sam Smyers. Turned out the output. And then what we wanna do is we wanna hit it with another compressor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate this compressor. We're gonna use both of these compressors in serial. And let's go ahead and turn this output down. All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. Our guest today is Sam Smyers. Let's go ahead and throw on another EQ. And for this EQ, let's maybe see if there are any other frequencies that we can dip or possibly raise. All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. Our guest today is Sam Smyers. All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. Our guest today is... All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. Our guest today is Sam Smyers. I actually added a boost around this 190 hertz because I want to give my voice some more of that booming effect. And I took some down in this mid-range just to take out some of the boxiness. So now what I want to do is I want to insert a gate. And a gate is going to remove the background noise and take down my breaths. So let's go ahead and put on a gate and we'll adjust the settings on this gate. All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. Our guest today is Sam Smyers. And you can adjust the floor to determine how much you're going to be taking down the level of the sound that is going below the gate. All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. Our guest today is Sam Smyers. So once I have that gate on, I would probably put on a de so that I can control some of those S sounds. All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. Our guest today is Sam. S All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. Our guest today is Sam Smyers. So finally, what I would do is I would put on a limiter and you could either put the limiter on your master bus or on this track if it's only going to be one track. I will just go ahead and put it on my master bus. I'm going to use the Fab Filter Pro L2. And then I'm going to put it onto basic. Let's do transparent. Let's go ahead and play everything with that limiter. All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. Our guest today is Sam Smyers. And what I think is I'm probably gonna take off one of these low cuts. I had a low cut on this EQ8, so let's listen to it now one more time. All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. Our guest today is Sam Smyers, because I still want some more of that boominess to my voice. Something like that sounds pretty good to me. Now, some pro level things that I would do is I would go and I would de-click my voice. And I always do this because I hate those like uh, saliva-y sounding voice sounds where it's like, where it's kind of like ASMR type stuff. So if I put on a mouth declick by Isotope, I could put this on the track and output clicks only. So now you hear all those clicks that it's gonna remove. And so I put that first on the track and then I would probably just bounce that track down with this processing on it because it's pretty CPU intensive and I don't wanna just leave it on there and take up too much CPU power. So here are going to be my effects. And of course, I have still some plosives in there. So I could also go to Isotope has another function for removing plosives, deplosive. So I could put this deplosive on, listen to podcast. Let's bypass it. Welcome back to my podcast. Turn it on. Welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. So that helps out a lot. And also, if there is any kind of background noise, which 
I don't really hear too much background noise, then we could go into one of Isotope's other plugins. So Isotope has a dialog denoise, which I could put this on, and this will remove any kind of hiss or background noise from your voice. Welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. So I don't think it really needs it. When you do use those type of background denoising plugins, they tend to add some artifacts and they're really just useful for when your vocal or your voice recording has a lot of messy background noise in it and using that type of denoise plugin will actually make your dialogue sound better. In this case, it doesn't, so I'm gonna leave it off. Those are the two pro things that I would do. I would de-click the dialogue and then I would add something like a deplosive plugin. So now for radio, we can actually increase our compression settings on this vocal to kind of give it a really overcompressed sound. All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. Our guest today is Sam Smyers. All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. Our guest today is Sam Smyers. All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. So maybe I do something like that. And then if there is music underneath, like we are introducing a song, then you're going to want to put on a sidechain compressor onto that music track. And whenever you do put that sidechain compressor onto that music track, use a slow release so that once that vocal stops, the music will slowly fade back in. All right, everybody, welcome back to my podcast, The Sam Smyers Show. Our guest today is Sam Smyers. If you look at the sidechain compressor, once I stop talking, you see that gain reduction amount slowly go back up and then you can hear it in that music where it slowly fades back in. So this is useful if you are talking in between songs or introducing a song for like a radio show and you need it to duck down but not come up really fast in between each of your phrases. So this is just some techniques for helping you get your voice to sound better for podcast or for radio. You can really just play around with it as I was doing in this example. I was just constantly adjusting and trying to figure out what kind of settings worked best depending on the situation. So hopefully that was helpful. And if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel because that will help you stay updated with future videos just like this. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.